organizations. Uh, power is the potential ability of one person to influence. And the key word here is influence, right? People with power, they can influence others, you see? So uh, individual you versus organizational power, let's see. We've got this idea of legitimate power. Do you know what's a legitimate power? Legitimate power, it's, it, it comes, it's a power that comes to you by law, you see? For example, in this class, I have the power as a legitimate power because in the class, I'm the instructor. Like Osama Dib here on campus, he's the student center leader. Therefore, he's got the power because of the student center and parts of the organization, do you see? Uh, you know, Dr. Roda is the president of the school. He's got the uh, power by legitimacy because that's the legitimate power. We've got people who've got power by reward power. People who will reward you. People, if you do uh, something good, they can give you some reward. Therefore, they become powerful. Remember, if you go on your team group and then one of your friends says, hey, I will invite you all for lunch. What happens to this person? Become more powerful because they've got reward that they give other people, do you see? So that's source of power. And uh, when we talk about coercive power, that's the person who has the ability to give you harm. So they've got the power, you know, that you don't want to be in such position, therefore you have to follow the rules. For example, guards, they have this coercive power. They can kick you out of the school, do you see? So you have to behave, and if you don't behave, they will kick you out. Therefore, they've got the power, you need to obey them. You know, everyone who's in a security, they've got this coercive power. And we've got this expert power, people who have the knowledge and expertise, do you see? People who've got the knowledge and expertise, then they become p powerful. If they tell you don't do this because, you know, whatever reason, probably because of their expertise, then you're going to follow their power. And we've got the referent power. Referent power is the power of, do you guys remember someone on campus? They don't give, they don't invite people for lunch, they don't have any power to damage you or hurt you, they don't have any authority, they don't have any legitimacy. But they've got this charisma, this spirit. Everyone likes to sit around them. These people, they've got maybe a sense of humor, maybe a great charisma, maybe people, they've got their voice appealing or their look is attractive or their, uh, you know, uh, personality is very charming. Any examples? Go ahead. For example, Uncle Ahmed has got this, you know, charming uh, personality that gives them the referent power. Any other examples? Any other examples? All right, so these are good examples. Uh, power versus authority. Now, that's follow-up question on what is the difference between authority and power? Now, the idea is that authority is more narrow than power. So which one is more wide? Power. power. Defined by the formal hierarchy and reporting relationships. So authority, who define authority? It has to be coming from the hierarchy, you see? For example, you know, uh, you know, I'm assigned for this class, and I have the power to give uh, students the power to maintain attendance of the class. Therefore, he got it from me, I got it from me assigned as the instructor for this class. Authority is vested in the organizational positions. So where you sit in the organization position gives you your authority power. Authority is accepted by the subordinates. So. <coughs> If your authority is accepted by the people below you, then you become authority. What happens if students here reject Ali? Say, no, we don't agree. Then the authority is damaged, right? So authority it has to be accepted by the subordinates. And authority flows down the hierarchy. It goes from top to bottom. Power, on the other hand, can be exercised upward. So someone in the bottom can have their power to put pressure upward in the company, downward and horizontally. Now, power has got more. Well, if authority is from top to bottom only, power can be in any direction. And authority is exercised downward along the hierarchy only. Are you guys okay with this? Now, let's look at vertical sources of power. We've got the formal position, so people have a legitimate power occurs to the top positions. So if you're on the top of the company, you've got the authority there. Resources. People who have money, they have more power. 
Do you guys remember in some companies that the finance manager have more power because they have the money? They're the people who sign the checks. So anyone who wants money, they have to go to the finance because the finance will sign the check. You see, that's why some companies, they don't like to let the checks with the finance people. So the finance people don't have more power than they should, you see. Sometimes you see, uh, like IT people, they have the power. Why? Because they have all the information, which is resources. Therefore, they become powerful. Next, we've got control of decision, premises, and information. So it consists of places of decisions. Let's say, for example, uh, if we look, go into an, uh, let's say, an oil company, who's more powerful? A reservoir engineer or the general manager secretary? You know, you will think maybe the reservoir engineer, they've got all the oil. But remember, where is the decision making happening? In the general manager office. So the secretary in the general manager office, they may have some equivalent power, maybe even more. Because they, that's where the decisions are made inside the company. And if they control the information, remember the secretary, they control what information in, what information out. And they can also be a source of power, do you see? Because remember, if you want to see the manager, you have to go by the secretary. And if the secretary lets you in, you go. If they tell you no, you don't. And uh, that becomes very critical. Network centrality. Being centrally located in the organization and having access. People in the middle of the organization, they tend to have power because of their location. You see? So people there in the center of the uh, team, they have more power because of their location. People who control the doors, the exits, they've got more power because they have more information and they can influence who's coming in and out and what goes in and what goes around. And we've got people, loyal executive managers. So, you know, people who are loyal, executive, top managers, they've got the, you know, the power there. Here we've got some information flow for computer decisions at the Clark company. This is a company, if all the information from computer manufacturing, from uh, system analysis, and from uh, programmers, all has to go through this guy, who's the director of information technology, and it goes to the board. Who's the most powerful guy here? This guy, Kenny. Why? Because all the information comes through this guy. Do you see? Now, here's another, the network centrality. Who's the most powerful guy here? Jasmine, David, uh, Rava, and or Keller. Now, this guy is very powerful, why? Because this guy is in the center, right? So everyone has to go through this guy. How powerful is this guy? This guy, he just gets the information from this guy only. You know, not much. This guy here has two bosses or two communication centers only. David has got only four. And uh, Anne only, you know, she's the boss of this person. And, she, and this person is the, so. The power of empowerment. The power sharing delegation of power of authority to subordinates. Do you guys agree? Uh, do you guys understand empowerment? So if we look at the empowerment benefits, we've got employees they receive information about the company performance. So when people on the bottom get more power, they get more information. Uh, employees become have more knowledge. They also gain skills. Because those people empowered, they get skills. How to do better, how to become, how to improve, how to contribute to the company goal. And also employees, when they have the power, they make substantive decisions. So we give them power, they make decisions that can help the organization, okay? And uh, well, horizontal sources of power, we've got here relationship across departments, units, strategic contingencies, uh, power sources. All right, let's start, stop here, and we will continue next class, okay?